Hi everyone, this lesson is on the signs and symptoms of endometriosis. Before we talk about those signs and symptoms, let's talk about what endometriosis is. So endometriosis is a gynecological condition involving the presence of endometrial tissue or endometrial mucosa in abnormal locations. So what should be the case is that this endometrial tissue should be on the inside of the uterus. So it, the endometrium is the inner lining of the uterus. This is where that endometrial tissue should be located. But in endometriosis, this endometrial tissue is in places where it shouldn't be. So outside of the uterus, in places like surrounding structures, on the fallopian tubes, on the ovaries, and even other parts of the body. So it is this tissue that is outside the uterus. Now this condition is relatively common. It can affect approximately 10 to 15 percent of reproductive aged females. And the important point to make note of here is that approximately one third of patients with endometriosis are asymptomatic, meaning that they don't have any symptoms. So they have this weird endometrial tissue in different places of the body that's outside of the uterus, so it's in places where it shouldn't be, but they don't experience symptoms. But the topic of this lesson is the symptoms that can occur in the rest of the patients. So there are a variety of signs and symptoms that can occur in endometriosis, and we're going to talk about those in the upcoming slides. So in patients who do experience symptoms, one of the biggest symptoms they're going to experience is pelvic pain. So it's going to be pain in the pelvic area, and this pain is going to have a characteristic feature about it in that the pain intensity fluctuates throughout the menstrual cycle. So the reason this happens is because these endometrial cells and this endometrial tissue that's in different places in the body, it itself responds to changes in hormone levels during the cycle. So what is often found here is that the pain is going to be worse at the onset of menstruation. Now this pain doesn't only have to be located in the pelvis, it can be found in other parts of the body as well. And some of these parts of the body that can experience pain include the lower back, the lower abdomen, and groin. These are going to be very common parts of the body that can also experience pain. Again, as we mentioned before, this endometrial tissue can be in different surrounding structures in the pelvis and lower abdomen, which can cause this pain. And again, location of the pain depends on the location of the abnormal endometrial tissue. And like the pelvic pain, this other pain can fluctuate during the cycle as well. So more specifically with regards to the fluctuation of pain, pain is often going to be worse two to three days prior to menstruation onset, and then it typically improves within one to two days of menstruation. So again, pain is going to be worse at the onset of menstruation, but it's going to improve a couple days after menstruation has started. So this is going to be the typical pattern of pain. And what will often be noted is that this pain can get worse over time. We'll talk about this more in detail in the next slide. So another very important symptom of endometriosis is going to be what we call dysmenorrhea. And dysmenorrhea is going to be painful menstruation or painful period, and it's going to be severe. So patients can often have intense pain and cramping. And what will be noted is that the pain will worsen over time with each subsequent menstrual cycle. And this will go along with those previous bodily pains we talked about before, the pelvic pain and some other lower abdominal pain and lower back pain. And this is what we would describe as progressive, meaning that over time with each menstrual cycle, the pain will get worse and worse and worse. What we often can see also as a potential sign of endometriosis is menorrhagia. So menorrhagia is going to be heavy bleeding during menstruation and can be heavy bleeding or can be prolonged menstruation which means it's going to be longer than seven days, so it's usually eight days or longer. And then what can also be noted is that bleeding can be irregular as well. Now another symptom of endometriosis is what we call dyspareunia. So dyspareunia is going to be pain during intercourse. Now this is actually a relatively common symptom of endometriosis. And then we can also see dyskesia occurring in endometriosis patients as well, and this is going to be essentially constipation. So it's more specifically difficulty defecating. There's pain during defecation or trouble or issues with defecating. So this is what we would call dyskesia. You can also see urinary symptoms occurring as well. So some of these urinary symptoms can include pain during micturition. Micturition is simply a word meaning urination, and this may be described as a burning sensation. So it may be described as a dysuria-like symptom, which again just means burning sensation when urinating. And we can also see increased urinary frequency as a potential symptom as well. And then we can also see pain while exercising. So Exercising can cause pelvic and or abdominal pain, and it's often going to be more rigorous exercise, although it may not have to be. Some even mild exercise can elicit pain, but 
often the more rigorous the exercise, the worse the pain in general. And again, with regards to this pain and other bodily pain, this can be very debilitating for patients. Now, there are also gastrointestinal signs and symptoms that can occur in endometriosis. These can include nausea and vomiting. So feeling nauseous can occur in some patients with endometriosis. And in some cases, it may lead to vomiting, although it may not in all cases. And then we can see bloating as well. So bloating is more likely to occur in patients with endometriosis. And now some other important information I want to mention here is that endometriosis, having endometriosis can lead to impaired fertility. And it is actually a very significant issue with patients who have endometriosis because impaired fertility is estimated to affect 30 to 40 percent of patients with endometriosis. So this is a very big deal for patients. And then we can also see a typical pattern of symptoms. We talked about those symptoms like pain and dysmenorrhea getting worse over time with each subsequent cycle. But what will happen is that these symptoms, especially the pain, will typically improve during pregnancy and after menopause. So once some of those cyclical hormone levels start to change over time, these symptoms can actually improve. So this is something to make note of as well. If you want to learn more about endometriosis, please check out my full lesson on this topic. And if you haven't already, please like and subscribe for more lessons like this one. Thank you so much for watching and hope to see you next time.